It's October 4th, and in today's video, I taste a Stella Main Crop, Genovese Nero, and GE Neri. And the, and the days are getting cooler, and the nights are actually getting really chilly. Um, so I know my days are numbered for ripening figs. However, the black Zadar is still looking good and productive as ever. Look at all the nectar coming off of that fig right there. Every single branch has figs on it. Um, the sad thing is I can't even eat all of these. The tree's really productive. And we're not doing a review on that. We are actually going to look at a couple figs right here. This guy's gotten a little dry. I actually turned the frequency of the watering in the greenhouse down because it was raining a lot. But uh, apparently this guy needs a little bit more water than, uh, than I was giving it. So it's drooping a little, but that's okay. This is called a um, GE Neary. Uh, this is a fig that was being sold on eBay. It looked really big, like... There's a picture of this fig next to a tennis ball and they were comparable in size. So let's pick this guy. Um, it has split. So, you know, I'm not too happy about that, but um, there are a couple more on here that might make it. This fig kind of reminds me of the Deanna in terms of size, kind of the splitting problem that I, I had with it last year as well. So I don't know, maybe it's the same thing, but yeah. Big tree. Um, Daddy, me. Look at that. As soon as I started doing fig videos, Mr. Nolan found me. Um, so this one was sent over to me as Jin Al Fen, but now that I look at it, it looks actually more well, it's not Jin Al Fen. Jin Al Fen is typically a yellow fig and it's relatively large. Who knows? This could be a brown turkey. <laughs> we'll see. Let's let's check it out, cut it open, see what it looks like. Here's an, here's another ripe fig right here. This one is actually labeled as Cordistella, but it actually might not be that um, or it could be just the Cordistella main crop and there's a couple of ripe figs on here definitely a main crop fig um, I'm not sure if it's Cordistella or not but we shall see hey you don't you look at those figs hey hey they're not ready yet. Back up, mister. Back up. So here's a couple figs that um, I want to mention. This is a, a white Madeira. I have a couple of figs on here that are really, really close. And, um, you know, they were outside. I took it into the greenhouse because uh, it's getting cold and I wanted to give some additional heat. There's another fig right here called a Dios Negra. Um, not a lot out there about this fig. However, yeah, there's figs out there, Nolan. However, look at this. They are really close to ripening and really beautiful and oblong. So I don't know, maybe maybe they will ripen. I don't know how good they'll taste without the, the heat to help it push it through, but um, Maybe a fig that I'll start earlier next year. This is Dios Negra. The Nolan, the Nolan Tax gave him a black Zadar. And that way I can do reviews on the new figs and um, keep him happy at the same time. Got our three figs for today. Uh, there's a whole bunch more that are ripe, but these are the ones that are new and um, so this was supposed to be a Jin Al Fen, and it's actually not. Um, this one is a GE Neary. 
and it's supposed to be a big yellow fig. However, it has split pretty badly. This is a Cordystella main crop. All right, let's cut into these guys. All right, let's start here with the Jin, with the Jin Fan Knot, or whatever this is, could be a brown turkey, who knows? This one is 58 and a half grams. Here's the GE Neary, 67.6. And the Cordystella main crop, 34.5. Let's cut these guys open. Okay, start right here. You know, whatever this is, it is a pretty good looking fig. Very, very juicy. And it, it could be a brown turkey, I don't know. I mean, do we really need to cut this GE Neary? Probably not, it's already split pretty good looking juicy fig and then the Cordy Stella main crop that is one of the most beautiful ruby pink red colors I've, I've ever seen on a fig beautiful I always like to start from what I think is the worst fig to the best fig however all the figs today seem kind of comparable they look juicy, they look sweet, and they look like they have really delicate texture that would just melt in your mouth. Um, well, I'm actually just going to start here with the GE Neary Fig. Um, like I said, this kind of reminds me a lot of the Deanna, um, which split really bad for me last year. And let's do a little quick, you know, bug check. <laughs> Um, I know one of you pointed out I ate a Desert King the other year that had a bug on it and I didn't even realize it, but probably, I mean, I didn't even taste it. It's okay. Not going to die. Many parts of the world, they eat bugs. Let's give this guy a try. Hmm. Okay. Very, very juicy. And it has like sort of that honey melon uh, type of flavor to it. Subtle. The sweetness is very good. Um, and there's a nice kind of richness of uh, richness that kind of coats your tongue. It's actually a pretty decent fig. Um, not bad at all. It tastes pretty good. Uh, the flavor actually kind of reminds me of a lot of the Golden Riverside without that. Uh, it doesn't have the, quite the punch like the Golden Riverside, but it's definitely in the same kind of flavor profile as that. It's a good fig. GE Neary. Um, surprising. I'll keep that around. Um, see how well it does and really just kind of compare it with uh, Golden Riverside a little bit more as the the years move on. Okay, so let's move on to the Cordystella main crop. I've never seen such bright colors on a fig like this. And um, this is again going to be a new fig for me this year. And I actually didn't get the main crop, so I'm just getting this one. Um, we'll see how good it tastes. It looks really nice. Love that color. It's good, but very subtle. Juicy, syrupy, really coats the tongue when you eat it. Uh, but not not very sweet. I would kind of rate that sweetness at close to like a seven. Yeah, right around there. Um, it has a light honeyberry type of flavor to it. It's, I mean, it's a decent fig. Uh, I've had better. This one doesn't punch you in the mouth like uh, like the Tacoma Violet does, but it is pretty good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this guy was sent to me as a Jin Fen. 
Now, if you look at this fig, it kind of reminds me of a Genovese Nero. Looks a lot like that, actually. Super juicy. I mean, if you look at it again, it'll also look a little bit like a magnolia or a brown turkey or one of those, right? But it, either way, it looks looks like a pretty good fig. It was in the greenhouse, um, so that, and it's been wet, so the skin really didn't kind of develop a, a hardness about it. It's really delicate. Uh, let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Very, very good. This m most likely is a mislabeled Genovese Nero. Uh, it kind of looks like previous Genovese's that I've had. And the flavor is so thick and syrupy and rich and sweet. It is definitely a berry fig. And I like it a lot. It's a really good fig. I'm going to have to relabel that fig. It's definitely not a Janelle fan. Um, I might have to call this one a Genovese Nero. So, anyhow, great fig. Check out those scores. Okay, guys. Hopefully I can get a few more figs this year. <laughs> Till ripen, so I can do a few more uh, tasting reviews, and uh, you know, give you guys all the information you need to make your buying decisions on future varieties if you're a collector, or just good varieties that you think might do well here. So, you know, um, most of my figs start either in the greenhouse or outside, um, but they don't go under artificial lights. Not yet. I did buy a light. So I could uh, ripen some of the later varieties, but that will be a different video. Tune in for that, guys. I'll see you again. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit like. Bye.